Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Williams and in this particular video I just want to very briefly walk through uh, the topic of viewport 3D and in this particular instance what I want to do is walk through how to render 2D, 2D geometry, how to render a scene that appears um, 2D to the um, viewpoint of the user or the gamer, if it's a game, um, playing the game or um, using the, utilizing the app. So without much further ado, let's get straight into this uh, into this video. So as you can see on the right hand side and the left, I have a program here that I wrote in C sharp using um, using viewport 3D, and it just simply outputs this uh, kind of a pale red, a pale red rectangle onto the screen. Now there's really not that much lines of code. Uh, it's just under t one about two hundred. Well, I'll say more like it's one hundred and fifty-four. I can see here, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, but anyway, that's besides the point. the The point is, it doesn't take um, that much involvement to actually get started with viewport three D. Um, it's uh, quite a quite a good namespace in the sense that it abstracts it abstracts a lot of the um, should I say the heavy lifting in terms of what you have to do in terms of involvement of rendering 3D with regards uh, when compared to um, methods such as DirectX um, and other lower level graphics APIs. So anyway, as you know on this channel, uh, Viewport 3D is uh, sort of an abstracted, it sits, it, it kind of borrows um, functionality from DirectX I believe and it just allows you to render 2D and 3D scenes using C Sharp and XAML, if you wish. It's a XAML controller at the end of the day. So this is a WPF presentation, a WPF application. So before we dive into the code itself, what I actually want to do is to run through some of the, um, the fundamental theory, if I could say, just so that as developers, we can gain more of an understanding of what we are doing so that we can leverage our fundamentals so that such that we can create more compelling 2D and 3D scenes, you know, without relying on memorization or perhaps code copying per se, but really it's more our fundamentals. So viewport 3D, how to render 2D geometry. Let's get straight into this. So it's not going to be very long at this section. We're going to look slightly at what are buffers, the concept of direct 3D vertex buffers and index buffers, and how we can learn from these concepts um, with regards to viewport 3D, how WPF draws geometry, so looking at the position and triangle indices properties, and then we're going to basically dive into the code um, to kind of see how all this works. Okay. So when it comes to buffers, and I'm gonna try my best to use the screen on the left-hand side as well, just to kind of illustrate what I'm doing. So buffers you can consider you can consider like short block of short blocks of typically fast memory, and it's usually quite volatile information um, that um, buffers will hold. So memory um, data that won't probably last the lifetime of the application session, you know. Um, you will typically find in a buffer. Say you're playing a video game and you load a character model onto the screen. That character model may be loaded from disk upon initialization, but then, then for speed, it's loaded into memory um, so that it can be accessed. So, um, at, you know, at a quite a fast rate. So that is what a buffer does. So if we look at, say, in Direct 3D 11, if we look at the primitive topology, uh, what is this concept of the primitive topology? All it says is that the primitive topology triangle list, for example, enumeration, is used to define vertex information. So what do we mean by this? And what do we mean by vertexes? And what does this have to do with viewport 3D? So every time we define in a buffer a vertex, a vertices, or some kind of geometry, let me just move this here, we are more or less defining some shape in a local space, in a local range. And that local range, we can, can, we can consider has some um, discrete um, value between minus one and one. For example, we have one on the y-plane, minus one on the y-plane. 
1 on the x-plane, minus 1 on the x-plane. And then 0 is, of course, in the middle. Uh, I'm going to change my brush color. So let's say, for example, um, we want to define a piece of geometry in a buffer. So I'm going to go here and uh, we're going to touch upon this idea of triangle indices and vertices. How is this done? So we would define in, lo in local space some x and y coordinate and a z. And z is for the depth. However, we're not going to be looking at that too much. And just to make this so that this makes a little bit more sense, I'm going to dive straight into the code even now, just so we can see what's going on. So don't worry too much about these member variables. I'm going to explain what they're doing as and when we go. But I want to kind of touch upon this idea of local space vertices. So what I'm going to do is, and I'm going to go back up so that I'm going to go, I'm going to explain what's happening and what you need to define in terms of the members. But just to illustrate this point, I have here uh, positions buffer. It effectively acts as the vertex buffer. So in viewport 3D, you can define a collection of point 3D, um, you can say vectors, vector values or X, Y, Z values. And you contain them in a point 3D collection class. So here I have one, two, three, four, but if it's zero index is more zero to three, as you can see, I've commented here. And we have values x, y, z, minus 1, minus 1, 0. So let's go ahead and plot that here. Minus 1 would be about here. Actually, let me just um, see if I can add another layer. Just to make things a little bit easier on me. <laughs> so minus 1. Minus 1 in the y plane. So we'll just kind of go here. And 0. So this is our first line, our first vertices, our first um, side of our geometry. Then here we have 1 minus 1, 0. So 1 here, minus 1 is down here. And then for the third point, we have minus 1, 1. So we have minus 1 here. So again, and then 1 going up. And finally, we have 1, 1, 0. So 1 on this, on the x-plane, and then 1 on the y-plane. And you can you can roughly see where this is going. We have about uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six dots connected on the screen, and this you would consider you would think that these dots would all connect right to create some geometry as you saw in the example, some kind of square geometry. I know this is a really rough drawing. However, how does the program know this is what we want to? This is the shape we want to describe. I mean for. Um, for instance, we could have maybe say this point goes here, then this point goes here, then this point goes here. How do we actually tell the program, no, we want to define a rectangle? Well, that's where the concept of the um, triangle indices comes in, in viewport 3D. And triangle indices just simply determines which set of vertices are connected to each other. Uh, this is optional in WPF viewport 3D. But what, what happens is that when you define... Um, three um the first three vertices that are defined becomes a triangle that's how viewport 3d renders its triangles uh, so if i go and if we look at this particular should i say buffer m underscore triangle indices which actually is just a int 32 collection and it's storing it values and i pass these index references 0 1 2 1 3 2 which is a reference to these particular vector points. So we are basically saying, okay, connect zero, and we know that zero, I'm gonna just label it was minus one, minus one, zero, so minus one, minus one. So this was index zero, the vertices. This one is one minus one, zero, so one minus one, zero, so this one is one. And then we have this particular area, which is minus one, one, minus one, one, that's 2, and then we have 1, 1, 0, which is 0 is just 0 in the Z plane, which we don't have to worry about too much because we're considering this on a 2D plane, so that's 3. So all we're doing here is saying, okay, these first three vertices are going to connect to make a line. So I'm going to change my color again. 
and I'm going to say uh, 0 is connected to 1, uh, which is connected to 2. And then that will connect back to 0 because it will... Um, it will, viewport 3D automatically creates a triangle with these three points, so it will draw it such. And then we have um, 1, 3, 2. So we have 1, we have 3. Oh, sorry. We have, uh, what am I doing? I'm getting confused myself. I was looking at the axis. So we have 1, which is down here. Sorry about that, guys. 3, and then we have 2. And then two would be connected to one. As you can see, we have some form of geometry, which represents our rectangle shape. Uh, very poorly shaded, but you get the idea, hopefully. So now that we have an understanding of this, it's just a simple case of um, cr creating our uh, code to reflect these concepts. So what I've done, I've named a bunch of members, and as I have on the last slide, of my presentation, the four key components that I would consider uh, in your viewport 3D scene is of course the viewport 3D control, but also a camera, light, and geometry, so geometry itself. And everything else can kind of extend from that. So we have here camera, geometry, model, 3D, and the thing is I, I'm working out of the XAML 99% of the time. In the XAML, I've defined um, the viewport 3D control, and that's about it, it's sitting inside the grid. Uh, but everything else here is defined, as you see. I'm going to leave source material in the description. It's going to be a link to my website with the source code in a code snippet. So feel free to have a look at the code there, just so if you want to study it a little bit more. But what I've done is I've got a, a initialize resource function. I'm setting the color, so this is the pale red color. Then I'm, I'm instantiating um, my members, most if not all of them. And then I create, this is the um, normals. Um, property. This pertains to the normals property in viewport 3D. And uh, what it actually does, it helps define the texture mapping for, um, like, say, image brush textures onto your geometry. But we're not really worrying about this as I'm using a solid color brush instead. This is, of course, um, the vector information, as I described, for the point 3D collections. And then we have our triangle indices. And then this is just for the texture stuff. But um, uh, as I said, I'm not really using the image brush. Then I'm assigning the vector 3D collection to the mesh geometry 3D. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm setting the normals and the positions property. I'm setting the solid color brush. I'm setting the material of the geometry. So we have, I think I've set the cam. Have I set the camera? No, I haven't yet. So the camera I'm about to set up here. I'm setting the tri I'm assigning the triangle indices values over here. And I'm assigning the material group into um, the material group can be considered some kind of container and I'm adding the material itself, this member, the M diffuse material. Then I'm setting up my camera. By default, you really want to start off at 45 for the field of view, uh, near plane 0 0.125. And um, the far plane, by default, is actually um, positive infinity, so you can leave it blank. I've commented mine out. Again, I'll leave some MSDN articles that explain these values in a little bit more detail. And then I add my camera to my main viewport 3D, and I add the main viewport 3D... Uh, model visual 3D, that is, to the main viewport 3D. And then I invalidate the visuals, the grid, and the viewport. And as a result, you see on the screen, you see the geometry. It's very, very simple. That's, that's why I think it's really good. If you can grasp these concepts and you're keen on learning um, 2D or th and or 3D rendering, then um, viewport 3D is not a bad place to start, actually. Uh, it's good. It makes for good practice as well, and you can do a lot of fun, neat things. So this is bringing us towards the end of this particular tutorial. Um, do feel free to keep up with this kind of series. Leave comments and suggestions as to what you want to see with Viewport 3D. I'm thinking of experimenting with some fun stuff, making some, as you may know from the channel, I like to um, develop 2D games. 
uh, might be doing some fun stuff using like a kind of 2.5D ideas and uh, do keep up with my uh, Fiverr as I've always got different gigs going on and uh, the website should be updated with some more walkthroughs. Links to these walkthroughs are on my website, um, some of them, and I am endeavoring to write them as well as written articles. So links will all be in the description. Thanks very much for watching. I very much appreciate it and have a great day, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.